What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. We're back at the kitchen table again. This is sort of the Corona lockdown series, I guess. It's what we have to do. So I hope wherever you are, you're safe, you're healthy, you're staying away from this, you're social distancing and all that important stuff. Today, I thought we would uh, step back to the basics. We're going to talk about white balance. We're going to talk about color correction, why it's important to get it right in the camera, and what to do if you don't. So welcome back to the show. Here we go. Any proper discussion about white balance needs to start with the camera. And all of us know if we've looked in these menus at all and not just set it to auto and forgotten about it, you have everything from auto and shade all the way through to tungsten, to custom white balances, to Kelvin. And all of those are options that you can use to get your white balance as close as possible while you're shooting. And I know what you've heard. You've heard, oh, you can just leave white balance and set it later if you shot raw, bro. <laughs> and while that's true about white balance, it's actually not true about exposure. And what I want to show you is just how exposure values change from white balance to white balance preset. So let's just throw open the computer here for a minute. And before I started shooting this, I set up a little, well, some stuff from the kitchen, as you can see here on my screen, just some bottles with peppers, some color. And I also put my color picker, which is this little guy right here, and this is what I use like when I'm shooting video or if I'm taking portraits. It's just basically your uh, grays and a bunch of colors and you can use these to, uh, yeah, you can use them to set custom white balance. If you haven't looked into these, let me know. We can do a whole, a whole thing on that. But basically starting with a white card so you have something to white balance against. But anyway, I included that in here so we can see what's going on. But what I really want to bring your attention to here is you can see in the layers palette I've stacked shade, cloudy, flash, sunny, fluorescent, tungsten, and auto version just for good measure. And then on top of that, I've got a levels adjustment layer. And I'm not using it as an adjustment right now. But what I want to show you is that as I turn on these layers, how that changes because this is a representation of our exposure and the values across the black to white scale of how much exposure we've got in each of those areas. So as I start to turn these on, watch what happens to that histogram. So from shade to cloudy to flash to sunny, now watch how this changes to fluorescent to tungsten and then to auto. You can see that histogram's jumping all over and it does actually make a difference. And as I've played with this, I've found that it can make a third to a half stop worth of difference in what my spot on the meter metering is for these. So you can see, yeah, while it doesn't matter and you can always change that white balance in camera raw or Lightroom later, if you don't get it right in the moment while you're shooting, it could affect your exposure values and you could end up with a darker or brighter exposure than what you actually wanted, making it a little harder to adjust afterward. All right, now let's play with this image a little bit since we have all these versions of it and it's up. Let's just go ahead and start at the most rudimentary level. You screwed it up in camera, you didn't set it up right, but you shot raw. So let's go ahead and make this adjustment in a raw file so you can see where that goes. And then we'll get a little more advanced from there to a couple of other white balance techniques if raw just doesn't get you where you need to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close that adjustment layer, I'm gonna turn all these off, we're gonna go back down to that shade layer which looks like the worst offender here. I'm just gonna double click on that layer because I opened all of these as smart objects directly from the raw file, I can just double click right on that layer thumbnail and jump back to Adobe Camera Raw which makes it a really nice way to transition back and forth to make little adjustments and come back into Photoshop and have an updated smart object that then holds all that information. So here in uh, Adobe Camera Raw, I'm just going to grab the white balance tool right up here. You can see and the quick key for that is I. So if you just wanna click over to that and then I can either use the white or the gray here in my white balance card, in my color card to make that correction. Now you'll notice because of the way that these two swatches are picking up light and there are different angles involved and reflections and that sort of thing, that if I click around even on the same swatch a little bit and you're watching over here in the tint and temperature area, so I'm just gonna click my way down that gray line, which is a consistent color across the board, but you can see how those values actually change a little bit. If I click over to white, it also changes. So this is where 
playing around until your eye feels like it's right is what you're going to have to do because there is no exact answer. And even if you are shooting in a studio and you hold a gray card next to your subject, next to your model or whatever, there's gonna be a slight variation in how that is reflecting light. It's gonna be super close no matter what, but just so you know, it's even if you have it, it's not exactly perfect. And this is really just our starting point anyway, trying to get our color as true to color as possible so that whatever we decide to do with the image afterwards, it's as close as it could be. So I'm just gonna click on the white here and just click okay and you'll see that my smart object is updated and now this image is white balanced based on the white card and we can continue to work with it either in camera raw or here in Photoshop. Now obviously in a perfect world, you'd have got it right in camera. If you didn't get it right in camera, you'd have a gray card like we just saw in your scene that you could white balance off of. And then you take that gray card out and you take the picture again and then you just use those two images, those two exposures to sync up those white balances. Now let's say that we didn't have that white balance card. So I'm going to go in and we're gonna take the same image without a white balance card and let's see what different ways we have to get the right white balance. Now obviously, if this was a raw file, we would wanna start there. So let's open up camera raw again and let's see if we can find a spot in this image that's pretty neutral. Now I know the wall isn't white, it's got a little bit of color in it. I know that there's nothing neutral gray on this scene really, but let's see what we can find. Now a lot of times if you know that you shot outside and it was daylight or you were shooting under fluorescent, you can just choose one of these presets and get really, really close. Now in this situation, I had overhead indoor light, I had some light coming from the windows. It's not gonna be just a one click and done. Let's go ahead and see though what auto says this ought to look like. Now obviously if we look at the image here, this is really not great. Um, I don't think this is even close, so auto is not our solution in this case. Let's go ahead and grab that white balance color picker up there and let's just click on the wall and see how close that gets us. That's better than auto, but it's also not great. So my gut reaction here would be, I'm not gonna get this right in camera raw, at least not yet. So let's just go ahead and exit out of this. Let's keep that awful yellow cast to everything and let's do this all in Photoshop. So what we need is a way to identify the neutral tones in this image. And I'm just gonna work through this and I'll put whatever keyboard shortcuts I'm using down here so I don't have to call them out. Um, first thing we wanna do is we want to create a new layer and we wanna fill that layer with 50% gray. And the reason we're doing this is we need a baseline, a zero tone value that we can then locate within the image below. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this gray layer, we're gonna change the blend mode to difference. Now what difference does is it shows us which pixels in that image are the closest to the layer that we've overlaid, so that neutral gray layer. So anything that is closer to black is going to be closer to neutral gray, anything that's closer to white is gonna be the furthest from our neutral gray layer. So looking at this image here in Photoshop, it's a little hard to tell. I mean, obviously we do have some darker, blacker spots, but wouldn't it be nice if we could isolate those even further? So to do that, we're actually gonna grab another adjustment layer, a threshold adjustment layer. And what threshold does is it allows us to look at which parts of that image are holding certain tones. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab that little slider and I wanna pull it all the way to the left. And then I wanna start coming right until I start seeing pixels show up. And the pixels that we're seeing show up first are the ones that are closest to black. So I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of leeway here. You don't need much, but what you do want is to see little little pockets of color. If you're just getting a single pixel here, pixel here or there, you're not pushing it far enough. So give us a little block of, of tone here. Now I'm just gonna zoom right in on that so I, can, so I can see what I'm looking at. And if I turn off those layers and look back at my image here, in fact, let me just zoom out here so we can see, it looks like in that reflection is actually where we're getting those neutral spots in the image. So let's zoom back in again, and I'm actually going to switch over to the eyedropper tool over here. The keyboard shortcut for that is I. And then by holding the shift key, I'm going to click in those black areas, and that'll actually leave a little marker here, a little identifier, so that when we turn these layers off, we know where those neutral points were. So I've just got a little, little one pinned here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off those two layers now because we don't need them anymore. And we're going to open up a curves adjustment layer. And this is where all the magic of this is going to happen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is over here in these color pickers, I'm gonna choose the middle one, which is our neutral gray color picker. And I'm just going to click right on that spot that I identified 
there in the image. And you can see just by doing that, we've made a huge change in the white balance, but we're not done yet. Now in the old days when we did this, we would choose a gray point and then we'd have to go through each of the red, green, and blue channels. And you can see if I click on one of these, the red color doesn't actually start till a little away from that left hand side. And so what we would do is we would drag those points in until, if I hold down the option key here, until we start getting clipping and then we would back it off just a little bit. And so you'd wanna bring those points in on either end until you got your red, green, and blues in the right place. Now, in current Photoshop, we have a great little auto button here that lets us take advantage of an algorithm, multiple algorithms actually, to make that adjustment. And so what I wanna do, rather than just hitting the auto button up here, I actually wanna hold down the Alt key, option on PC, no, <laughs> sorry, option on Mac, Alt on PC, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and click the auto button while holding down option or alt on PC. And that will bring up our auto color correction options panel. Now we have four different algorithms that we can choose from here. I find most of the time, find dark and light colors works the best. And I would recommend that snap neutral midtones checkbox be checked. And then we have these other three versions of of the algorithm here. And I, in this image, actually, it's not the fine dark and light colors. It's enhanced per channel, camp channel contrast, which fantastic, that's, that's great. Now, the other part of this dialogue is this target colors and clipping. And this is our shadows, midtones, and highlights. And you can actually set those colors and you can set how much you want them to clip. So in this case, it's just, just this little tiny amount here. Sometimes I'll back that off because I'll find that the shadows are a little too dark, like it's clipping in too far. But I think in this case, uh, in this case, the, the default is, is right. And a lot of times it is right. So if we just click okay, and then let me just close this here. And there we've got before and after, before and after. And you can see what a dramatic difference that makes. Now, obviously we would want to go back to camera raw. We wouldn't want to make some adjustments to our shadows and highlights and all the things that you normally work through on an image, but now our color is correct. Now let's look at another way to do this. Let me go ahead and delete these layers that we've got. And now if you've got a good image that's got a nice broad range of colors, this doesn't work with anything, everything. And if you've got an image that has big blocks of color, like you've got someone, maybe they're wearing a bright blue shirt or I don't know, they're standing against a red wall. That'll be too much of one color. But in this case, we've got a lot of color, we've got a good mix, and so this will work. And this is actually the easiest way to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate that layer, and then I'm going to go filter, and I'm gonna go down to blur and just choose average. And what this does is it averages out all the pixels, all the tones, everything in your image, and gives you the average, the absolute average. Now, obviously, this is an icky color and it's not neutral, so we know our white balance is completely off. So now we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer, again, just like we did before. We're gonna grab that middle guy and we're just gonna click anywhere on our stage here because it's all the same color. And it will actually convert the whole image to a neutral gray based on that average. So if I go ahead and turn off that average layer, you can see what a difference that's made. Now this is ugly, so let's go ahead and go option, click that auto button again. Then let's just find the one that looks best and it's the same one, enhanced per channel contrast. So now look at that. In a single step, we've gone from here to here and our color is a lot cleaner. So depending on the image, you have a couple of ways that you can get to a far more neutral white balance. And then from here, you can make little tweaks, you can adjust those curves. Now, if you're going to add another curves layer for something like contrast, you'll actually wanna add that on a new curves layer. Don't mess with your white balance curves layer add a new curves layer above that, and then we can just pull in those, put a little S curve in there to give ourselves a little bit more, a little bit more contrast. So here we have the before and the after. All right, so let's put this into some real world practice. So here's an image, it's got an actually quite complicated lighting scenario because it's a cloudy-ish day, but we've got a lot of color in the leaves, We've got that fall tones and reflections of that light coming in. And so this is one of those more difficult to nail down white balance situations to begin with. And it actually looks decent out of camera. I'm pretty sure it was shot on cloudy or something like that where it's it's close, but it's, it's not perfect and we can make it better. So let's just work through this image from start to finish. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that in camera raw. And let's make some basic adjustments here um, just, to, just to get this image more to where to where we might wanna actually 
actually work on it. I'm just making a little bit of, of exposure adjustments here. I'm gonna push the whites, pull the blacks a little bit. I think I actually want to put in a radial adjustment right there in the middle, just to bring up the, the exposure on me there in the center. Now, as far as white balance goes, we could just use our white balance clicker and maybe try my helmet or my socks, something in the white family, maybe this silver piece of hardware here. But let's just go ahead and put that back to as shot because we're gonna do the white balance in Photoshop. So I'm just trying to get the image as close, as close to where I want it to be, exposure, tones, that sort of stuff, and I think that's good. So we'll just click OK and bring that into Photoshop. Now, let's go ahead and use our gray neutral gray method of doing this. So new layer, fill it with neutral gray, change that neutral gray to difference, add ourselves a threshold layer, pull that threshold all the way to the left until we're just barely starting to see stuff. I'm gonna zoom in and find ourselves a good little pocket here. Mark that with the eyedropper, turn those off, grab my curves layer, sample middle gray, zoom back out, click on auto, and again, per channel contrast, looks great. So let's just turn those off. Let's actually add another adjustment layer here. Let's just pull the darks in this down a little bit further. Push the highlights, maybe that's too much. All right, let's say we're happy with it right there. So let's just go before and after, before, and after, and you can see getting that right white balance, a lot of times your eye will think, oh, this looks good. This did look pretty good right out of camera. Nice tones, not, not super bad, but once we actually apply those corrections, you can see just how much more true this image looks to what it should look like. Let's zoom in here and let's just go before and after, before and after. You see the skin tones, there's more true colors in the reds and the blues than there was before just altogether a better image. So anyway, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you have any questions, if you want a deeper dive into white balance, or you really wanted me to get into the nitty gritty of any of this stuff, please leave a comment, let me know. That's always super helpful as I try and figure out what to do for you guys. Obviously we're locked inside for a while because of this whole, this whole thing. So uh, if you wanna do any more kitchen table editing, let me know in the comments below. I'll probably do it anyway, but I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff that helps so much. I'm a new channel, still just trying to grow. So uh, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Boom.